Welcome back. In the last video, we started our look at tropes to avoid in fanfic by looking at Mary Sue's, Insert Sue's, and Over the Top characters. We also had a brief discussion of the difference between character and caricature. Today, we're going to look at melodrama, monologuing, and introducing author notes. We'll finish by looking at the 10 most reviled tropes in all of fanfic. Let's get into it. Melodrama and monologuing. There's a writer on YouTube I like named Alexa Dawn. She gives really good advice, including fanfic advice. She calls this Bond Villain Syndrome. You even see this in some old movies and modern B-movies. The antagonist has the hero dead to rights. But rather than finish them off, they start monologuing which allows the hero vital seconds to escape. This cliché is dead for a reason. Even modern movies like The Incredibles make fun of it. It might be fun to write, which is fine for your private library, but it's not fun to read. Adding Original Characters or OCs This is a bit of a controversial one. In my last video, Six Hacks to Level Up Your Fan Fiction, I endorsed the creation of OCs to fill the gaps in your story and stir the pot between canon characters. But the truth is that some people don't like OCs in their fan fiction for any reason. I stand by my original assertion, but I also understand that this isn't for everyone. If you choose to introduce an OC into your story, just be intentional and upfront about it and understand that some readers won't like it. Think about the story you want to tell and decide whether an OC is needed or not. Depending on the story you want to tell, an OC may be the only way to go. I'm writing a Star Wars Stargate crossover right now where most of the cast are OCs by necessity. It takes place in the Old Republic several hundred years before the events of A New Hope. Most of the characters except Yoda haven't even been born yet, and I'm not about to torture time and space to squeeze them into the story. I haven't given you full details of the plot, but within the greater context of the story, this makes sense. At least to me. The point is to be intentional and purposeful. Inserting Author Notes Some fanfic authors insert notes about their thoughts and feelings on a scene and why they made the choices they did. No one cares. Stop. Can you imagine watching a movie where the director cuts in every few minutes to explain why he chose the lighting for a particular scene? Or where the actors broke character to explain their motivation to you? It would be completely frustrating and spoil the illusion. You can always tell a great actor or actress because once the camera's rolling, they melt away. They aren't there anymore and all you see is the character. As an author, you should melt away into the background of your work. For a skilled author, the only proof of your existence at all should be that the words on the page had to get there somehow. They don't just appear by magic, but your reader almost needs to think they did. If you really feel the need to engage your readers with author notes, do it at the beginning or end of a chapter. Make a clear, obvious separation so those who enjoy them can read it, and those who don't can easily skip them. But I still encourage you not to use them. There's something to be said for allowing a little mystery in your writing and letting your readers' imaginations fly. Before we continue, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ding the bell so YouTube will notify you when I upload new videos. And don't forget to check the description of this video for book recommendations as well as all the tools and resources I use in my writing and video production. Back to the video. The Worst of the Worst According to Fansplaining.com, which I've linked to in the description, these are some of the most consistently reviled tropes in all fanfic. Some of these should definitely be off limits, but even the others could go horribly wrong if not well thought out and executed. Underage I won't go into detail here, this one should be obvious. Just remember folks, when it comes to underage kids, 16 will get you 20. Non-con. Non-consensual pairings. Rape, essentially. Also obvious. Incest. Another no-brainer. Eating disorders. Anorexia, bulimia, and the like. A very sensitive subject and one that needs to be treated with respect. Major character death. This is a big one. Most people don't tune into a fanfic to watch their favorite characters die. They'll more likely read if you decide to retcon an unpopular character death, like bringing back Beth from The Walking Dead or something. This is called Fix It Fic. If you desperately need to kill off a character, I recommend creating an OC. Mpreg, or male pregnancy. I don't get it. My wife has been pregnant three times. It did not look fun. Much less like something anyone would fantasize over. The writers at fansplaining.com don't get it either. Slavery. This usually focuses on pairings and certain pervy elements. 
It can also appear in magic genres as forced bonding to a magical creature. Bullying, another very serious issue that needs to be treated with respect. Self Self, a character canoodling with an alternate universe version of himself. Ego much? Centaurification, where a character turns into a half-human, half-horse. Apparently this is a thing. The Fansplaining.com article also has a list of tropes that aren't liked or reviled, but just that fans consider controversial and undecided. It's worth checking out if you're interested. Let's wrap things up. The six most overused tropes in fanfiction are The Mary Sue The Insert Sue Over-the-top characters Melodrama and villain monologuing Original characters and author's notes, and I ended with a list of the 10 most reviled tropes in all of fanfiction. That's it for this video. I hope it helped. Until next time, good writing and Calamus Gladio Fortior.